So, of course, uh, most of the conversation in the next couple of days is going to be around the state of, ec of the economy, of the Nigerian economy. We're deeper into recession. So much has been said, but uh, there's a silver lining. We'll call it the Oshibajo silver lining, a press statement from the vice president's office yesterday as soon as a slew of economic data came out from the National Bureau of Statistics try to calm the nerves of Nigerians to say that despite the gloomy outlook, the federal government expects better economic outlook for the second half of the year. Some have shared this optimism, but most want to know what are the plans. They want to see the plans. They want to know what the federal government is going to be doing. So much conversation has already been had, even here on the program this morning. We've talked about what the federal government needs to be doing at this time. And that conversation will continue now as I'm being joined on the program by a financial and management consultant, Oji Udemizwe. He's also the CEO of Flame Academy and Consulting Limited. A good morning to you, Oji. Good Thank morning, you for coming on the program. Thank you for inviting me. Okay, so we're taking a look at uh, the issues. Of course, uh, there's been a plethora of uh, discussions already and um, solutions proffered, the best ways for us to move forward. Uh, do you have a different view from what most people have said, that at this time the federal government needs to start thinking about ramping up spending? They should be the ones because the private sector really takes dressing from the, the public sector, from the government. Yeah, when an economy is um, going the way our economy is going today, you know, into recession, it means that urgent actions must be taken to wake the economy up. Actions must be taken to spend, not just to spend, to spend in the right way as to attract investment, as to beef up confidence, as to provide enabling environment for companies to thrive. The news I've even heard from you this morning about companies closing down, winding down, is not good news. But these are the consequences of a, an economy in recession. So every effort must be made to see how we can, you know, not just uh, um, attract uh, portfolio investors, but also ensure that we bring in as you know, quickly as possible you know, foreign direct investment. And also ensure that our local investors, Nigerian investors, who have funds, you know, uh, well, uh, these funds might have come one way or the other, but those who have funds will not be restrained or constrained or even be afraid to bring out these funds to spend in the economy right now. We, we need to fight corruption, but there must be a limit to fighting that corruption because there's no economy in the world where you don't have corruption. But what can we do to encourage, you know, funds available in the country to be out, you know, for investment, to encourage people to spend this money, you know, on, on the economy? So there are several fiscal and you know, monetary policy actions that must be taken urgently. We seem to have focused a lot on monetary policy. And I don't, even, I don't envy the central bank today because they are in a big dilemma. If you notice, in the past one year, we've had policy reversals. Sometime later, you know, late last year, through early this year, you know, the, 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 CBA, the central bank seemed to be minded about trying to help the real sector by ensuring that we you know, ease monetary policy a bit and allowed interest rate to moderate where, you know, um, uh, investors could get money in the financial market at cheaper rates. But because of the fight we've had with foreign exchange, which now gives rise to, you know, increase in prices of commodities, we've had inflation jumping out the window. And as the inflation jumps up, whatever it is, it's called, with the argument has gone on, whether it's a cost push or demand pull. And as long as we keep these prices going up, CBN continues to try to rein in inflation mm -hmm. by increasing interest rates, you know, tightening monetary policy. And the dilemma is, what is best for us at this point? Do we continue to chase this inflation, or do we look at the real sector and see how do we create employment? How do we generate activities? How, we, how do we grow output? How do we ensure a proper investment in the key real sector of this economy? Agriculture, you know, manufacturing, and so on. So we can see activities and curtail this heavy you know, bloodletting and shedding going on. People are dying every day. No, there are no jobs. Unemployment is, you know, you know, going so high. And practically, people, if you move around streets of Lagos today, you'll be amazed how free the roads are. People don't move about anymore. Activities are coming to a, you know, a halt. I share the optimism of the vice president. Every nation has to be positive mm -hmm. at any point in time. We can't go negative. But what we're saying is that we need to begin to sit down with the right people. We have to come, come down our high horses as government. I plead with the president of this nation at this time to come off his high horses, 
to manage the People Democratic uh, uh, Party PDP, manage APC, manage Afghan, manage everybody as one nation. So, so, so How can we think... come together? Like the conference that they had the other day, APC governor calling Saludo to speak to them. We need such engagement, not just for APC, but for this whole country. We need to, as a nation, speak one language about how do we get this economy to work better. This is not a time for politics. Okay, Oji, Oji, settle down. We'll get to it. We know that we're deeper into recession. So do you think that our, as, as a president is thinking about calling everybody to the table, all stakeholders to the table, because that's what they say, they're going to engage effectively all stakeholders, do you think they should also be thinking or saying we should declare a state of emergency on the economy, maybe, just maybe, if we declare a state of emergency on the economy, we might get out of recession? Declaring a state of emergency is a nomenclature, it's a statement, it's statement of intention and it does not give rise to anything except it is backed up with well-minded deliberate proactive you know intensive and purpose-driven actions somebody some young man from uh, an acting uh, you know, research head is almost spoke my mind on some of these issues while we've had these positive statements we need them to be backed up with real actions to be specific CBN needs to sit down and ask real questions about what is causing these price increases, this inflation. What is the evidence that we can gather? Evidence-based policy making. So we don't keep chasing after shadow. Now, I, I don't, why I say I don't even them is because we, we need to attract foreign portfolio investors by making sure that negative real interest rate we have is not so deep. For example, inflation is now at 17.1%, and then you have uh, NPR at 14%. Meaning that in the economy as a whole, you have you know, a real uh, uh, interest rate of negative 3%, which means that foreign portfolio investors will not want to look at our way. That's, that's uh, enough to worry about. But we're also looking at an interest rate that's climbing off the roof, going towards 20%. Already, Central Bank has issued papers, you know, treasury bills, 10, out, you know, um, uh, 10 months, one year, they're already approaching 20% interest rates. What does that mean for the real sector of the economy? You know, people cannot get funds you know, um, to grow their business at a rate that is reasonable for their businesses. You have to worry about foreign portfolio investors who are looking at, can they access funds, not just their own uh, foreign funds, but local funds, to be able to run their business profitably. So these are real issues. You know? So talking about the real issues, the real issue now for the Nigerian man, the average Nigerian man is, how do I get food on my table? How do I make sure that I'm able to keep this roof over my head? Because you see, the price of everything is climbing. And it seems in, in the very short term, you can't get quick cash to do what you need. Yeah, we've said that the real issue for Nigeria, for me, is a, mid, a bit of a medium to long-term, you know, action. But every long-term decision has a today. We know that the only way out of this, Nigeria is, we are blessed with very, you know, uh, arable, you know, quality land. We are blessed with very strong human resources. We are blessed with, you know, the energy to bring our food out of the farm to the market. We are blessed with, you know, very rich land. For me, the practical things that must be done, first of all, is let us stop the drain in our oil and deal with this Avengers issue. I don't know how they're going to do with that. We have enough security experts in this country. We have great ambassadors of peace who are willing to wade in. But we must find a way to curb the activities of Niger Delta Avengers. It's critical. But then, that's, even, that's at in that, the short run. even at that, in the short run, we also need to make sure that this... Uh, attack by herdsmen on farmers it should also be, you know, looked into because you say, you talked about bringing food from the How land. So we have, a, now, we have a lot now, of people who are sitting at home afraid to go to the farms for fear of being attacked. That's why I'm so saying. So we have a food security that's why challenge I'm saying, also. I beg, I, 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 said, horizon. I beg the president of this country to take, to, take, to take actions. You can't come and tell us the people that do these things will be caught up, you know, um, you know, the full weight of law will be upon them. But we are not seeing these actions being, you know, taking place every day. We, you tell us the same thing, the next day, more attacks happen in either Kogi or in Enugu State or somewhere else in the north or in Kaduna. And then not, nothing is being done. This is how Boko, you know, Boko Haram started, escalating gradually. We are fighting a war on all fronts. Nigeria is a nation at war. And we need to see the commander-in-chief of this country take definite actions. It's not just to focus the whole attention now on... Avengers. Sometime, you know, a few days back, a, a northern leader said, oh, he should go and fight Avengers first before coming back to Boko Haram. It's a pity that we're having these wars happen. But these wars must be given equal attention. The federal government of Nigeria, as I believe, should give as much attention to Boko Haram as they give to Nigeria Avengers and as they give to these 
thing we've called uh, headsmen, who I believe are actually terrorists. We must deal with this equally. Why other minor issues about um, discontent growing in the south, in the east, and all of that should also be dealt with? This is not a, a nice time to be a president, but this is a time that calls for real leadership. You know, we have to begin to deal with these issues. And in the midst of that, while the president is dealing with that, we have to you know, assemble well-intended, well-meaning technocrats who are in abundance in this country to look at the issues about our oil. How do we curtail our importation of, you know, we've, you know, in the midst of all this trouble, people have forgotten our key, you know, I've mentioned these things here before, our low-hanging fruits. Number one, how can we, as a matter of emergency, not just depending on Dangote, who's, I'm sure, his uh, um, uh, refinery will come up in the next one or two years. What are we doing to revive our own refineries? Well, he's not also immune to, to all the challenges that are going on. And to feed those refineries with our own product and get our own diesel and, and even uh, ATK. Today, the airline aviation sector is shutting down. Ghana is taking over from Nigeria as the aviation hub in West Africa. What a shame. Ghana, what a shame. A nation that boasts of 180 million people. Ghana just has about, a population of about 40 million or thereabouts. Not even of that. Taking over you know, uh, uh, this hub from us. It's a shame. We're not taking the real actions we should take. Let people, different teams, focus on different at, 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 you know, at this point, uh, point in time. Let's stop importing petroleum products as much as possible, early enough. But I call it all of them. What can we do to get them work? It's all about discipline and you know, um, have, you know, leadership. Let's bring people together and let them understand why we must stop you know, killing ourselves. Let these things work. Let's find a way. CBN is trying with their anchor program to see how we can bring our rights to the market. And that effort is giving rise to a lot of good news we're hearing. You know, you know Anambra has said we have Anambra rice. Okay. You know, a few uh, parts of the country are also coming out with their own rice. That's the kind of action we need now. You know, vegetable, all the things. Nigeria cannot be hungry if we actually put our, you know, hands to the plow. We can't be hungry. The issue is that is government doing the right thing to market these products? You know, find a way to partner with private sector to market. Let's polish our rice, give it the highest, you know, maximum advertisement. Our tomatoes, our, all the grains that we have, we have so much. You know, cashew nuts. And then, you know, polish these things and bring it to the market. And then you don't need to ban items yet because you don't have the local capacity to produce them. But as you bring in your own alternatives locally and you make importation more difficult through tariffs, not by, you know, forest restriction. I'm coming to that. This restriction here and there cannot help this country. Tomorrow we hear that, oh, we are now giving, a, as, as, as we have, you know, the president or central bank has now become for the Christmas. This uh, month, we're going to be giving 60% of manufacturing. We'll clap for them. Tomorrow, we'll give them 80%. Why do we have to decide how, how you, what to give to sectors? Why don't you make this a market, a free market, where people have access to this fund, whether you're doing manufacturing do, do, or do, whatever? Do you think if we have a free market, we'll be able to begin to see some stability? We'll be, we begin to... That's a form of people action. People have said, you know, kept saying that we that have preached uh, devaluation, that we are responsible for the reason why this thing is flying through the window. I owe nobody any apology that Nigeria had, you know, have, you know, has to devalue its currency you know, the way we have. Because we don't manufacture what we consume. If you look at the issue of the unit price of maybe uh, uh, a cup of rice in Nigeria compared with uh, that same uh, product in the U.S., you know, well, you know uh, 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 it's our own product overvalued, so we should, why should we devalue our currency? The issue is that do we produce our own rice? You can only make that argument, economic argument as to the price of one bucket of ice cream in Nigeria compared to one bucket of ice cream in, uh, in, uh, in U.S. or in New York to say whether you have to, you know, you are overvalued or not. You can only make that argument if you actually produce your ice cream locally and not go to import what is, you know, uh, produced in New York. So as long as we don't produce what we consume, we have to ensure that our pricing, you know, is, is, is proper to be able to, you know, uh, show transparency, you know, and seriousness and stop bleeding off, you know, ex external reserve. Now, you know, we say things here, Harriet, and it takes 18 months for people to understand them and, and implement them. Thankfully, we understood that we didn't have to continue to deplete our external reserve. It took two years mm. for Central Bank to listen, and they did that. It also took us many years to also preach that, you know, this uh, issue of uh, pegging our, uh, our, our rate, you know, had to be stopped. It took under 18 months for them to do that. I'm waiting. Salute also mentioned that a few days ago, and I felt gratified. He said, he told the NP, um, APC governors, one of the ways to ensure that we create transparency is to remove this ban on 41 items. I'm saying they are not only 41 items. There are a number of items, more than 41, more than 50, which we, we deem legitimate in this country, but which we sh you know, shut out of the forest market. That is, you know, lack okay. of transparency. Okay. As okay. long as this 100 naira gap between the official rate of 300 and 420 is there, trust me, 
this dance will continue forever. Okay, so we still have, uh, we're still trying to share the optim optimism of the federal government and uh, we're looking at uh, ways to get out of recession. Thank you so much, Oji, for coming on the program this Thank morning. Thank you, Harriet.